right, so we're here to do the last step in the assembly for our uh, microwave boxes for our devices. You've seen it milled out before, uh, you've seen it gold plated, and now we're just gonna finish the last few steps in assembly. We're gonna be putting in some transition boards in this part of the detector uh, near these holes uh, where we'll put G3PO connectors. All of that will be uh, grounded and heat sunk in with the solder paste. Uh, and then we'll finish up by connecting the center pins of the connectors to the transition board with a fine tipped uh, soldering iron. Um, with that said, you can see that these devices have 10 feed lines. These are for our array style uh, mech devices, like the devices we have in the Subaru camera. Um, and let's get started. Um, so these are the transition boards that we were talking about earlier. They've got uh, 10 different feed lines that break out to these 10 connectors and they uh, concentrate on the center region where we will put the device later. Uh, so first step is getting the soldering paste out because uh, that's what we're gonna use to secure these. So we're putting out the soldering paste right here Does that look good? Fine. Okay, I'll start with that much. I'm gonna move this to the back of the shot, but I'll be using it. I'm gonna grab some dental tools. These are what we mostly use for applying this kind of stuff. So you don't wanna to put too much down, uh, especially in one place. Otherwise it'll uh, squirt up above the board and could cause shorts. For instance, on the previous board that we made, uh, we do get a short on one of the pins because some of the solder paste got pushed up around the G3PO connectors. Okay, so let's pop these in. Uh, I'm gonna put them in this side first so that if it presses up, it's more likely to press in the other direction. So as you can see, it just slots right in. I'll do the same on this side. Try to keep my hand out of the light. Yeah, easy as that. Now I'm gonna tape these in so that they'll stay in as I manipulate this, trying to get the G3PO connectors in. So we like to use aluminum tape for this sort of thing. Okay. Is the back of that too close or is it okay? Uh, what do you mean? To where the G3PO's are going to come in? This one is maybe, yeah. But I can, uh... Oh, it's actually kind of pulling up on the transition board. That should be good. Okay, as you can see, the transition boards are still pretty loose in here because we haven't uh, melted the solder paste yet. But we're waiting until we get all these G3PO connectors in. And I will uh, show some of those in a second here. Okay, here's the G3PO connector. You can maybe see the inner pin uh, from this side, but you get kind of a half shell housing over here that comes in over the ground plane of the transition board and makes your ground contact, and then the center pin is what gets you your signal. So 
here are the G3PO connectors uh, right here. Um, half of these will go on this side and we'll do those first. Then I'll tape them in uh, after I've applied solder paste around the outside here to hold them in place and make good contact. And then uh, that'll be done and you'll watch through the microscope. Uh, tape those in, flip it, and do the other half on this side of the uh, of the box. Yeah. It's not in in yet. It is tight though. There we go. Snaps in. Do one on the other side. So I'm always gonna keep checking on this side to make sure that the half dome uh, isn't pushing into our transition boards when I try and shove these through. So that looks pretty good. Let me give it a little tap. Double check the rotation. Okay, give that a shot. There we go. So you can see some of them go in a lot easier than others. That's why we have to tape them to make sure they don't slide out. Okay, now that I've gotten a couple on the sides, I'm gonna move more into the middle so that they can hold the transition board down and it doesn't get bowed. Okay, so that's all of them on this side. So we're gonna tilt the box up now and give you a different angle while we put some solder paste around the edges here. So now we're just putting a little bit of solder paste. And when I say a little, I really mean a little around the edges of these little circles. So I had too much coffee today. So you really want to try not to get any in the cup. And it's better when you get the right amount on your applicator. Makes it a lot easier. Okay. Any of this excess stuff on the surface, I'll come clean back up at the end. So this actually might even be a little much. So I'm going to try and spread some of it out now. Yeah. It's hard, I'm trying to do like how the nail techs use their pinky as a little anchor point. All right, here we go. You just really want just enough to make a nice seal. And actually now that we're looking through the microscope, you can really see what the solder paste is, which is really just a bunch of little balls of solder, like lead-based material, some most of the time, but less I guess in modern times. This is too much. But this is, yeah, uh, in the balls, and then a flux, I guess, is the actual liquid part, and that uh, is basically just the medium for how you can spread it around. Uh, and then when you heat it up, all the little balls melt into a conductive... Um, contact, yeah. And we've got good swabs, yeah, which I'm going to use to clean up this... this bit of the edge here. Yeah. 
and you can see there's still a little bit of flux there, but it's close enough for government work. All right, on to the next one, riveting material. 19 more to go. Yeah. Okay, that ought to be good enough. And that's two of them. All right, we'll skip till they're all done. <laughs> so now we just tape up over these G3PO pieces. And we wanna make sure the piece of tape isn't uh, coming on this side of the detector uh, box because we're going to place this on a hot plate and it'll interfere with thermal conductivity. All right, the last part, we have to get the uh, just a little bit of solder paste onto the um, onto the center pin to solder it closed. Now, this doesn't always work. Sometimes we have to come in here later and clean it up, but we'll make an effort. See the center pin. Okay, there's no way I'm gonna be able to do this uh, under the camera. I'm gonna to have to take it off and do it under the microscope. But basically what we're doing is, see these center pins there? Uh, these center pins need to be uh, soldered down. So we're gonna put a little bead of solder on the end of each pin. This is definitely the most fun part Yep. But eventually it's nice to have it done. Yeah, we got to suffer for science. No one said it was easy. Okay, we've got some solder paste on the center pins. You can see there's like blobs of solder um, right here and right here. It looks messy, but surface tension is going to suck it off the Teflon white part onto the gold part and hopefully make a nice connection. Sometimes this doesn't work and we have to go in with a soldering iron and touch it up afterwards, but it should work pretty well. Then the next thing we gotta do is um, put a little bit of solder paste onto the, um, uh, bet onto the pins just to help hold them in a little bit. Uh, also helps us tell when this is actually done uh, baking, which will be the next step. So we'll just put a little bit uh, down here. And we'll just go through and carefully get it to work. So the final step is to put it on the hot plate. You can see we're on the hot plate right now and to heat it. So we're going to turn it up to 300 C and we're going to keep an eye on the solder here. And um, we're going to try to see the, um, uh, we're going to wait till the solder starts to melt, wait a little more and then we'll take it off the hot plate and uh, the box will be done. The last thing we'll do is just put it in a, um, we'll sonicate it. We'll put it in an ultrasonic cleaner using uh, some isopropyl alcohol. That'll get rid of any of the solder flux that's left over. And uh, then we'll go through and just test each of the lines to make sure there aren't any shorts or opens. And then it'll be ready to put into a, to have a device wire bonded in. This will take about five or 10 minutes to get hot enough to melt the solder. There it goes. Oh yeah, woo! Oh, that's cool. See how it flows everywhere? Makes a nice thin layer. Goes where it's supposed to. We'll give it another five or 10 seconds to make sure everything is melted. But we don't want to let it go too long. All right, let's remove it from the hot plate. All right, there it is. We're basically just gonna let this cool down and then sonicate it and we're all done. All right, we're taking off all the tape now.
So the uh, sonication is using ultrasonic waves. It, uh, it's basically uh, making tiny little bubbles that scrub off all the solder flux and the things we don't want. It's like an ultrasound. It's the same thing that you would use to image a fetus. But a lot more powerful. Yeah. Here she is. Now it just gets checked and we'll be ready to roll.